good morning. Good morning. I want to thank you all for coming. And uh, helping us communicate um, and address some of the concerns that our community has about this, little, well, I want to say little mosquito. It's actually a big mosquito uh, that um, uh, is responsible for what is called the West Nile virus. Uh, unfortunately, we have confirmed that an 83-year-old Donna resident uh, had died Wednesday night of the West Nile virus. Uh, there's also a, another individual, uh, an elderly man from the far area, who has been hospitalized with what is expected to be the second case. Uh, our investigation into these cases is underway. This is the first locally acquired case in Hidalgo County since 2012. And both cases tested as a neuroinvasive, which is the most serious form of this uh, particular virus. Uh, the Hidalgo County death is the third West Nile virus fatality in Texas this year. People over 50 and those with uh, weak weakened immune systems are the most vulnerable. And we're, what we're doing is we're urging our residents to take precautions while while they're outside, just use your basic common sense. The county has been involved in spraying to kill the mosquitoes. They're also going to be larviciding standing water to kill, keep the mosquitoes from uh, actually being born. Each precinct has been notified and will be conducting colonia cleanups as well as mowing tall grass and draining standing water. And school districts, hospitals, doctor's offices, and veterinarians have been alerted. At uh, this time, uh, you know, we've got here with us our health director, Mr. Eddie Olivares. And Eddie, if you'll go ahead and come on, step forward, sure. please. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eddie Olivares. I'm the Chief Administrative Officer for Hidalgo County Health and Human Services. And as Judge Garcia has brought out that we do have our first cases of West Nile in Hidalgo County. It's been since 2012. I think one of the interesting things that's important to understand is that West Nile, one of the things I was reviewing with the media right beforehand was that West Nile first uh, was discovered in 1937. It came to the United States for the first time in 1999, which is an interesting situation. The mosquito type we're looking at is a, called a Culex mosquito. That's a mosquito that's pretty common in this area. There's four subspecies and two of the four subspecies are here in the valley. So we see that. One thing that's very important in your media pack is we put that this is a, bur a bird transferred illness. Uh, West Nile virus is primarily found in birds and a lot of them, we have a very large uh, uh, migration pattern for birds here in South Texas as we know from our birding industry. So the reality is that the birds are the ones that transmit the illness to mosquitoes. Mosquito will uh, bite a bird, draw the blood, get the infection, pass it to another uh, mos another bird or another mosquito or an animal or a human so it transfers from bird to mosquito or mosquito to bird to animal or to human so that's the primary way it transfers the incubation period could be from 2 to 14 days uh, depending on, 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 the, on the severity of the illness 70 to 80 percent of the people will not show symptoms Okay, 70 to 80% of the folks will not show symptoms. If you're a healthy, active person, you may have it and you'll never know you have it. But this is a concern for the elderly and for people who have immunocompromised illnesses that are very concerned. Uh, about one in five people who are infected will develop a fever and other symptoms such as headache, body aches, joint pains, vomiting, diarrhea, or rash. Most people with this type of West Nile virus uh, recover completely, but fatigue and listlessness will last for several days. There's two types of West Nile that we're looking at, West Nile fever, which is the one I just described, and then the next one, the more severe one, in less than 1% of the populations are infected with, will develop with serious neurological illness, and it's more it's West Nile uh, neurological disorder or disease, and the, the thing with West Nile neuroinvasive disease that it will be kind of a meningitis. Uh, oh, I'm gonna mispronounce it today. <laughs> a meningitis type of illness where there'll be inflammation of the brain and cause some neurological issues and concerns. That is the most severe type that would cause hospitalization and, and 
can really cause some long-term damage. This is the case that happened in these two cases. But it's in very, uh, the symptoms for that, the symptoms of the neurological illness can include helix, high fever, neck stiffness, uh, disorientation, coma, tumor, seizures, and even paralysis. People with certain medical conditions such as cancer, diabetes, hypertension, and kidney disease are also at greater risk for serious illness. Recovery from the severe disease form of West Nile may take several weeks or months. Some of the neurological effects may be permanent. About 10% of the people who develop neurological infections due to West Nile will actually result in death. So even though it's only 1% of the population that get, or 1% of the West Nile cases are the neurological type, but there is a 10% incidence of mortality, especially if there's other illnesses accompanied to this. And this is what happened in this situation. We are working hand in hand with our vector control task force. We've done this in the past where we get our several Cameron County, Hidalgo County, we'll work hand in hand and bring in all our, our licensed vector control uh, experts together to come up with an organized plan uh, on dealing with this. Um, we are very honored that we have one of the leading experts in dealing with the mosquitoes, actually, in, at the state level. He's here in McAllen, Josh Ramirez, the City of McAllen Health Director, is actually considered one of the leading experts in dealing with, with mosquito-borne illness, and he's actually took part of a task force that dealt with West Nile up in Central Texas a couple of years ago. So he and I have already been in contact, and we're going to be having a meeting next Wednesday and bringing all our forces together to coordinate all efforts. The precincts have all committed uh, to helping and assisting with this. We're working with the cities and all the school districts. We send out alerts to cities, I'm correction, to the school districts, hospitals, doctors, veterinarians. Any of you, please take care of your pets. Pets are very, very important in this. If you have horses, West Nile virus is deadly for horses. And uh, it is very important that you follow up with that and making sure you consider your pets in dealing with this. Uh, if you're allergic to the DEET spray that you would put on, there is a eucalyptus, more of an herbal natural component that's a lemon eucalyptus that's used to be used a natural uh, a preventative method to keep mosquitoes away from you. The main thing is get a physician consult. Now we have flu season coming upon us, so the symptoms are real similar to flu. So all of a sudden you have flu, you have West Nile, and then also in, in the mid-America you have the EVD-68, which is that virus that's affecting, respiratory virus that's affecting many people in, in, in the uh, Kansas, Ohio, Illinois area of the country, and the symptoms are similar. So we have a lot of overlying illnesses that have very similar symptoms. So if you are presenting with any of these symptoms, please go to your physician and get a consult. Very, very important.